Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. I'm Sriram and this video is part 6 of our tic-tac-toe AI which we're making on Python. Now in case you've not watched parts 1 to 5, I will leave a card for you right here. Before we proceed, I just want to congratulate you on making it this far because this is going to be the last and final video of our tic-tac-toe AI series. So by the end of this video, you're going to have a completely working tic-tac-toe application. And uh, in this video, we'll just be completing the ending animation so that we have a smooth transition into the end screen. Let's begin. So first of all, I'm going to scroll down all the way uh, because I need to set up a couple of variables. I'm going to do this right after the danger positions, but you could do it somewhere else as well. Just make sure it's not inside one of those functions. So I'll be having four different variables. So the first one is called start x um, and I'll be setting this to zero and uh, I'll be setting all these variables to zero. So what I'll do is uh, duplicate those lines. The next one is going to be called start y, which is also going to be set to zero. The next one is going to be called end x, which is set to zero as well. And the last one is going to be called end y, which we're also going to be setting to zero. So those are the four uh, variables which we need to set up initially. Um, once you're done with this, you could actually go up because we're going to start creating some functions now. Uh, I actually think I'll go ahead right off, right before the update function maybe. Uh, I just want the update function to be last. So I'll space, uh, I'll uh, enter in a couple of lines there and let's define this function. The first one, I'm going to call it get pause, okay? And I'm going to have two formal parameters, n1 or number 1 and n2, number 2. So the two numbers we want here into this function are going to be the particular square numbers. So here's how it's going to work. There's going to be, uh, let's just say hypothetically that the player has 1, um, although it's not possible, but let's just say that happened. Now there are going to be two um, squares where we start and finish, right? Um, so for example, if we win in this format, I'm going to just quickly get the board here. Uh, and all right, so this is a comment error. So I'm just going to add in quickly a, a comment there just to make sure that that code works. This should take a second, but basically assume that we have a one, two and three one. In this case, the numbers which we want to go into this function, which I'll teach you how to do later, but the ones which we want are one and three. And we want to make sure we draw a line between the two of them since that's where the player won. So to do that, we're going to have, let's just assume we get those numbers. Don't worry about how that'll come later on in this video, but let's just assume that we get the um, square numbers. Now the square numbers are one thing, but to actually draw a line, we need the square positions, right? We need to know where the, uh, the exact coordinates of the center of the square. So to do that, we actually have an X and Y position in our sprite and we can use that. So add in a couple of global variables first because we'll be using all of this. So first of all, say start X, then we uh, can say start Y, then we can say end X, and finally we can also say end Y. Perfect. Now after this, I'm gonna have a quick follow. So I'm gonna say for SQS in squares, which is the square list, in each of these squares, I'm going to check if the uh, if the particular object's number is equal to n1, and if it is, I'll be setting the start x and start y coordinates um, to be their respective square x and square y coordinates. So let me duplicate this line, and here I can say start y is equal to sqs dot y. Perfect. So I meant here equal equal to. So make sure you don't make the same mistake as I did. So this is going to be for number one. We can do a similar thing for number two. So we can just have an elif instead of an if. Um, in this case, I'll be checking if sqs dot oops if sqs dot number is equal to uh, equal equal to n two. In this case, we'll be setting end x to be equal to uh, sqs dot x, and we'll be setting end y to be sqs dot y. So I added in a quick typo there. So I added a capital Y instead of a small Y. So just adding in a small Y should change it and hopefully make everything, you know, error free. So that's going to be all we need to do in this get pause function. So next, all we have to do is draw a line. And for that, I'll have another function, although technically you could do it in the same function. I just think this is simpler. So let's have def draw 
uh, yeah, draw line here. So to draw a line, we actually need four different uh, four different values. We need the starting x position, we need the starting y position, we need the ending x position, and we need the ending y position. So I'm going to have those values as oops, I'm going to have those values as x1 comma y1 and x2 comma y2. So x2 comma y2. These are going to be set up as formal parameters, but we'll be basically using the start x, start y, end x, and end y coordinates. So within this, I'm simply going to say p dot draw dot line. And within this, first of all, we need to type in the window where we want to draw the line. So in this case, this is going to be win. Next, we need to type in the color, and this is going to be in an RGB value. So we can say 0, 0, 0 to do a black color. And once we're done with this, we type in the starting coordinates. In this case, it's going to be two of our formal parameters, which is x1, y1. Then we can type in our ending parameter, uh, our ending coordinates, which is going to be x2, y2. And finally, we type in the width of the line. In my case, I want a nice thick line, so I'm going to go ahead with a width of 15. Now you could play around with the width, see what works for you. 15 works pretty well. Uh, you could go a little higher, maybe to 20, but um, you could uh, you can basically test it out. Now once you're done with all of this, this is not going to have any impact on the screen unless we update it. So it's important you add in right here a p dot display dot update. Once you're done with that, you can add in a small time lag because if we don't have a time lag here. Um, this thing is going to end so fast that we're not even going to realize that there was a small animation there. So once you add in the time lag, this is going to work if we use the functions together. Now at this point, these are just functions. We haven't really used them anywhere. So to use them, you can scroll up not to your comp move, but to your winner function. So you have def winner here and uh, not actually winner function, but your check winner function. So we basically go through, you know, all the items in the, um, in the board list and we check if any of them has one. So if you remember in our board list, we have them in the form of a list within a list. So this list here, right, this is when we're referring to this, right, we're referring to the first element of the first, um, of the first list in the board list. So in that case, that's really gonna be the first square. So uh, for example, if we have, um, this is gonna take a while to run, but let's see this come on. All right, so if we have the you know first element of the board list as within you know square brackets one comma two comma three, again this particular um, you know winners i zero is really going to be referring to one, and winners i two is going to be referring to three. So we just need to take the uh, we just need to take these two values, um, which is the ending of this, and we just enter in to uh, enter them into our get pause function. And we'll basically get the coordinates which we need. So after we set um, one to true, or maybe you can do it before. I, I guess I'll do it after. But after we set a one to true, what we can do is add in a get pause and basically enter in those two things. So just copy this code here, and uh, you can paste it for your first coordinate. And after this, you can paste it once again and just change that to be i two instead of i zero. That's going to be all we need to do. However, you're going to uh, get into some bugs when we use the draw line function. So to make sure we don't enter into any of those bugs, we just have to add in uh, as global coordinates start x, start y, and also end x and end y. Now once you're done adding these things in, you won't get any errors, so we can go on to the next part of the code. So after we break, we're going to go through this if one, in our case, it's going to be true. And once we're done, we want to make sure the screen is updated. Um, and after we're done update, uh, updating the screen, we're simply going to go ahead with our draw line function because we already have all the necessary coordinates, right? The x coordinate is going to be start x, the y coordinate is going to be called start y, the um, x, uh, x2 is going to be end x, and uh, y2 is going to be end y. So this is all we need to do. You can add in a simple space to make sure this is indented nicely, but this will make sure your animation works. So I'm going to test it out. I'm going to hit the run key. Um, this should take a second and there we go. Um, let, let me let the computer win because I can't beat it. And there you go. We have a nice animation. We go onto the end screen. Perfect. And that ladies and gentlemen is going to be your entire tic-tac-toe AI program. I've sure had a blast making this series and I do hope you enjoyed it as well. 
If you've enjoyed this series, please make sure you click on the playlist on your screen right here and that will take you to a brand new Python segment. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.